The higher level people need to spend some time at mine sites and get a feel for what's going on and not be guided around by the people who are the managers at those mine sites. And they need to talk to real people and find out what the real issues are. Andrew Iwas is used to getting his hands dirty. Home is a small farm in central Queensland, but for 30 years he's worked in mines. Coal mining's been good to me. There's good job security. The money's certainly good. The conditions are good. And I think there's a certain camaraderie within the coal mining industry that people um, enjoy. There's certainly a lot of mateship to be had there. Andrew is one of a handful of miners who made submissions to a recent state parliamentary inquiry based on his experience in both open cut and underground mines. No matter where you go, each mining house will have its own slogan for um, the way it wants to manage safety, whether it be zero harm or those types of things. In reality, when you get on the ground, things are very different. When people are actually doing their jobs, it seems to go out the window at the expense of production. The industry insists it follows best practice in safety procedures. Mining is a $74 billion industry in the Sunshine State, but it can be a dangerous job. Last month, Queensland recorded its 54th and 55th mining fatalities in just over two decades, when Dylan Langridge and Trevor Davis died at a zinc mine in the state's northwest. Herman Fashing is Chief Inspector of Mineral Mines and Quarries at Queensland's Mines Regulator. Resources Safety and Health is examining the incident at Dougald River Mine. The investigation is currently underway uh, and that investigation will be a thorough investigation and, and until it's complete, really, I can't say any more than that. We're having lots of fatalities over these the last 20 years. More fatalities, more fatalities. They're, they're singular ones and now this la latest one, it's a multiple. It's two. And if we don't jump on board and and actually have a good look at ourselves and try and change it. What next? Veteran coal miner Scott Leggett knows the deep grief that grips the community when tragedy strikes. Scott lives in Moranbar, a mining town about two hours inland from Mackay. He's president of the local miners' memorial. Each year a family member volunteers to contribute to the memorial and they will talk about their loved one who they were, where they come from, what they meant to their family. Yeah. Queensland Mine Safety has been scrutinised by three different inquiries in over three years. The latest, which focused on coal mining, was run by one of the state's parliamentary committees. Its final report noted a gap between what mining companies say about safety and what workers claim actually happens on the ground. We'll put some controls in place. It will reduce the injuries or the accidents. Um, sometimes you, you don't even have repeat ones for 10, 15, 20 years. And then over time, because the price of coal has gone through the roof and they want to get more of it out of the ground as quickly as possible, they look at what's slowing them down and sometimes it's the controls or the processes that are in place that's doing it. So they'll start removing little pieces at a time. When it comes to the crunch and a job might have something where they need to stop and change what they're doing, quite often they won't follow the process that may be there for that, whether it be in a procedure or a, or a work instruction, because that may have more steps than they really want or they don't see value in that, so they'll do it a different way. In a statement to 7.30, the Queensland Resources Council, which represents mining companies, said safety is a core value of the council and its members, and said anyone with safety concerns should raise them. But Andrew and Scott, both members of the Mining and Energy Union, told the inquiry they'd witnessed workers being punished for doing exactly that. I know people personally that have 
raise their safety concerns and the next week they'll get a text message or a phone call to say that they're no longer required. Um, you, you can see a week later or two weeks later, they're replaced with somebody else. We get complaints from time to time from industry uh, and sometimes those contain elements of allegations of reprisal. Uh, the, you know, all our complaints that we receive are investigated uh, and we take action where, where we find uh, issues are not as they should be and people aren't in compliance with the legislation. The Queensland Resources Council told 7.30 it had previously requested evidence of reprisal, but that evidence had not been provided. It urged anyone with evidence to support their claims to raise them with the appropriate body. Is there a video footage of it happening with some audio? No. Um, you know, the, the proof is when they're there one day and then the next day they're not. When was the last time they spoke with someone who worked at a coal mine? When was the last time they spoke with somebody who was a labour hire worker who didn't want to speak up because they were scared that if they said something about safety that they wouldn't have a job the next day? Queensland Resources Minister Scott Stewart declined an interview with 7.30 but says he will carefully consider the recent parliamentary inquiry's recommendations. Among them is independent research into whether production targets impact on worker safety. The Queensland Resources Council is also working with the Commissioner for Resources, Safety and Health on a survey on safety reporting culture. Like many mining families, Scott and his daughter Anika have had some difficult conversations. It's for her, and the partners and children of others, that Scott speaks up. If something's not good, well, you do something about it. So, I'm trying. It'll probably cost me my job somewhere along the line, but I'm not going to die wondering. Mm -hmm.